Hey, baby. Hi, how you doing? This is my buddy. Yeah, see, it's my buddy. Hi, buddy. Yeah. He likes my monster shirt. Yeah, and he likes devil ants. Hey, doggy. Hey, doggy, kiss me. I'm the devil in that. Hey, doggy, I'm the devil in that. The dog didn't care about the devil in I want to drink your water. Go, 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 go. Hey doggy, I'm the giant fly. Bzzz. Bzzz. Oh help, I fell and I can't get up. Hey doggy, kiss me. I'm the giant fly. Bzzz. I like you. Bzzz. I'm gonna have some of your water. Hey doggy, play with me. I'm the giant fly. I'm the giant fly. Hey doggy, play with me. I'm the giant fly. I'm the giant fly. That's the invisible thread. Yeah. Yeah, it's the invisible thread that makes me fly. Just doing some scenes for the giant fly. The Lars doggy. Okay, cut that's perfect. This this is my Gorgo shirt. It's Gorgo. I think Godzilla has Gorgo. This is my Monster Bash shirt. See Monster Bash Creepy Club Monster Bash dot US. Monster annual Monster Bash conference. And I'm looking forward to Monster Bash 2021 when this Corona beer virus is over. You know, that makes people drunk. They get, you know, and then uh, we can go to Monster Bash and have a good time out there in Mars, Pennsylvania. I got in my nice hot Java. Go, go, go. I got to watch the Untouchables now. See, there's Elliot, N Elliot Ness and the Untouchables. He was my childhood hero, man. Yeah, watching the Untouchables. There's Elliot Ness, man. There's Elliot Ness. Yeah, I watch The Untouchables every Sunday. Eight hours of The Untouchables and uh, H&I, Heroes and Icons channel, every Sunday from 11 a.m. Central Time to 7 p.m. Central Time. Robert Stack is my childhood hero. Elliot Ness and The Untouchables. Yeah, okay. I used to play The Untouchables in kindergarten with, when I, me and my friends, we'd take over the girls' dollhouse. I, I pretended I was Elliot Ness and I made like a fake Tommy gun out of the Tinker Toys. You know those round things, you stick the sticks in there? And I made like a fake Tommy gun. One of those discs, you stick the sticks in, that was supposed to be the, the thing that turns around, you know, and the Tommy gun, the big round thing that has the, the bullets. <laughs> and I, I hold it and I go, all right, you're all under arrest. <laughs> I say, come on, men. My buddies, I, my buddies would make like a fake pistol with a, Tinker Toys, and they, they were like my fellow Untouchables. They said, come on, we're going to play the Untouchables now. We're going to take over the girls' dollhouse. So <laughs> we arrest the girls. I say, all right, you're all under arrest. <laughs> Go to the dollhouse. And then we used yarn for the handcuffs. And we had the girls, I said, all right, put your hands behind your back. You're under arrest. So they put their arms behind their back, and I tie a bow knot, you know, like a bow knot like you tie your shoe. That way, when the teacher came back, we would let we would release them real. we just pull the string, and they'd let them go. So the teacher wouldn't catch us, right? Because she caught me a bunch of times playing Untouchables. And um, they, you, she usually caught me. She said, David, you can't do that. The dollhouse is for the girls. You, that's not your detective office or your Untouchables office. <laughs> I'm only, this is Elliot Ness. I don't want any trouble. You're all under arrest. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I, got, I got like two or three buddies of mine to be like my fellow Untouchables. You know, Agent Lee Hobson, Paul Paterni. I met him. I met him and I met Bruce Gordon, who plays Frank Nitty on the Untouchables. And uh, I met them both. 
at, at a convention in 2004 right over here in Rosemont, like a Hollywood celebrities convention or a Hollywood collectibles convention. And um, so I told I told them the story, you know, when I was in kindergarten over at Washington School in, in Park Ridge, Illinois, Washington Grammar School. The time on deck is, here's the time on deck. It is 1.03 a.m. Central Time down in the dungeon of David Rock Nelson. David, David Rock Nelson in his dungeon of monsters. <laughs> and there's my new glow-in-the-dark skeleton that I got, man. Look at that. See when the light goes out, man, that thing glows in the dark. Yeah. Okay, now on with the show. That's actually Paul Pacerni as Agent Lee Hobson. And it was Washington Grammar School in Park Ridge, Illinois. That was actually at Western near Crescent. Kind of near there where Washington School was. Well, it still is. It's Washington. So, you know, and I told them this story, you know. I told um, Paul Pacerni and Bruce Gordon, who plays Frank Nitty. Paul Pacerni plays Agent Lee Hobson, L.A. Ness's right-hand man in the lay it's actually Paul Pacerni as Agent Lee Hobson. And as one and Bruce Gordon, who plays Frank Nitty, Paul Pacerni plays Agent Lee Hobson, L.A. Ness's right hand man in the later episodes. And um, so I told them this story how I used to play the Untouchables and we'd arrest the girls in kindergarten at Washington Grammar School in Park Ridge, Illinois. So, you know, it's Park Ridge, two words Park Ridge, Illinois. And um, they, they, they got a laugh out of it. Okay, cut, that's perfect. I bought an autographed picture from Paul Pacerni of him and Robert Stack and the Untouchables. Yeah, and he autographed it for me. And I got my picture taken with both of them. So see my Facebook page. I, celebrities meet rock, and you can see those pictures among all the many celebrities I met. There's a picture of me with Paul Pacerni, and there's a picture of me with Bruce Gordon, who played Frank Nitti on the Untouchables. Okay, that was on from 59 to 63. And um, Desi Arnaz, who started Desi Lou Productions... He said they got a lot of death threats. Yeah, they got death threats. People, there are gang members that shoot bullets at the uh, studio. You know, they threatened. They threatened to kill him if he didn't take that off the air. And but he, he kept that series going. Thank God for Desi Arnaz, man, and Desi Lou Productions keeping that series going for four years from '59 to '63. Okay, and they had Untouchables trading cards in like 1962 at Ben Franklin Five and Dime Store and, and other dime stores around the U.S. You know, Ben Franklin, Woolworth, they carried the Untouchables trading cards for five cents with a stick of gum, and I I used to buy those. Yeah. Okay, cut. That's perfect. I got some nice hot job. I want to watch Columbo now on MeTV. Good, good, good. Ah, that's good job. See, that's Gorgo. Gorgo. That's my monster shirt I got from the Monster Bash convention. Okay, cut. That's perfect. I'm their most notorious guest of honor every year at the annual Monster Bash conference in Mars, Pennsylvania. So come to Monster Bash 2021 because we're going to be rocking and this corona thing's going to be over. They're going to have a cure. Frazier defeated Ali to retain his heavyweight title that he won from Jimmy Ellis. And, uh... He won one portion of it from Buster Matzis, and the other portion he won from uh, Jimmy Ellis. So that's when he became the undisputed heavyweight champion, Joe Frazier, when he decked, stopped Jimmy Ellis in 1970. And then he fought Muhammad Ali like about a, the next year, March 8, 1971, which was billed the fight of the century. The best, probably the best fight of all time. And Frazier dominated Ali. I, I gave Frazier like 11 rounds to maybe four rounds for Ali. Ali maybe Ali won only three rounds. Frazier just dominated that fight. Body shots, bang on the head. Frazier, oh, was at his best. That was his best fight. No, they decked Ali in the 15th round. That's when smoking Joe Frazier became my hero. That's why I got a life-size picture of Joe Frazier in my room. See, this is my other room. That's my, that's my picture of smoking Joe Frazier, my hero. Smoking Joe, man. I wanted to be built like him, man. He had muscles. Stocky guy. I met Joe Frazier. I met, I met him uh, three times. Then I got my picture taken of him right in front of his gym when I met him, first met him in 85. Smoking Joe Frazier, see? And I got my beer like Joe Frazier now. Yeah! And then there's a, here's a poster of uh, Manny Pacquiao versus Thurman. Manny Pacquiao is my favorite current fighter today who's boxing today. Yeah, I saw that fight live on uh, pay-per-view, you know, at a bar. And, uh, you know, that was a close fight. Thurman put up a good fight, but uh, Pacquiao definitely won, but it, it was close. Pacquiao's awesome. He's over, he's 40. He's acting like a young man. You know, he's in shape. 
He fights like a 25 year old, you know. And here's my life size picture of uh, Frankenstein Boris Karloff. Boris, Boris Karloff. There's a Frankenstein thing I made when I was in bio card out of construction paper. And there's a Dracula I made. And I hung those in my dorm, my dorm window, dorm number two at the Maranatha Baptist Bible College, Watertown, Wisconsin. You know, because I was a student there. Oh, and then, you know, from 80 to 85. And then I wrestled varsity there. My wrestling coach was Ben Peterson, former Olympic gold medalist in the 72 Olympics, won the heavyweight gold medal, 198 pounds. And then uh, the ne and next time in 76, he won the silver medal because he had to wrestle Chris Taylor, a fellow American. And Chris Taylor weighed like 350 pounds. He could sit on you and pin you. Chris Taylor won the gold medal that year. But... But he'd pin everybody. He sits on your pen, man. And the guy would eat like a couple of pizzas for lunch, like a whole chicken for lunch. And, and he'd eat his dinner would be similar to that. You know, real, real big meals, you know. But, you know, he was so heavy and fat, you know. And he died of a heart attack like at age 47 when he turned to pro wrestling. But, you know, you, all that extra weight, you know, that's going to hurt your health, you know. But uh, so Ben Peterson still got, I just got a letter for I wrote him. And I just got a nice card from him about a month ago. He's doing good, Ben Peterson out there. He's not the wrestling coach there. I think his son's the coach there now at the Maranatha College. Anyway, but anyway, look, there's a Cyclops I made in seventh grade out of a Quaker Oats box, toilet paper tubes and a cardboard like bowl there, toilet paper tubes for the legs and a paper mache, and I painted it, inspired by the Cyclops from Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, you know, by Ray Harryhausen, you know. I saw that movie and I wanted to make a Cyclops. My my teacher said, you know, why don't you put polka dots on it? You make it colorful, you know. I wanted to make it furry. I wanted to make it look like the Cyclops from the movie, but she said, why don't you put some stripes or polka dots on there? So that's what I did. And then here's the cup that um, I threw in the my movie, The Fish Man. Sunday, 9, 27, 13, 6, 27 p.m. Your fiend, Dave Rock Nelson, a.k.a. The Fish Man. This is the cup I threw in my movie, The Fish Man. Happy Halloween 2013. Whoa, whoa. Art, art by Rock. Whoa, whoa. And there's the mask I wore in Conrad Brooks vs. Werewolf. And Janet wore that in Miss Werewolf. And I wore that in my upcoming Werewolf of Chicago. And Werewolf and the Witch, which I finished. And then uh, there's a King Kong bank I got for five bucks at a Hollywood Collectibles convention, Michael Lannan's Teenage Wolf. And the artwork by Bradford De La Brooke, also known as Bradford Brooks. His art of Frankenrock, inspired by the David Rock Nelson t-shirt art by uh, Jeremiah Crow of Jeremiah Crow's insufferable one-man show on Facebook. And then there's, um, here's, you know, there's, Frankenstein, we're a model kit, the wolf man, the creature, woo, and there's the Frankenstein model. I got it, I got it like a uh, collectible store on Belmont in Chicago. Yeah, and there's the Frankenstein nails. I got that from Scary Monsters magazine, Dennis Truck Tennis. You know, and I got all kinds of cool stuff, man. Dracula in his coffin, coming out of his coffin. Strange Universe, I was one of the five finalists on Strange Universe. I should have won, but they gave it to this local guy, Jack. The first documentary I mean, called Can't Stop the Rock Nelson. It says right here, Can't Stop the Rock Nelson, directed by Chris Kaler and produced by Franklin Wales. There's me getting interviewed right there by Franklin Wales. There's a picture of me, and there's uh, right there, there's a picture of me in the movie, yeah. Okay, so, and then, then there's this other later documentary. This one was done by November Fire, you know, and, and uh, released by Streffen Taylor of November Fire Entertainment out there in California. The Rock Edward of the 21st Century with footage shot by Jace Whitman of California and up uh, and Chuck Jarman of Bumpin' the Night Productions. They both videotaped stuff for this documentary, and it's on a double bill with my movie Werewolf and the Witch. They were that cool artwork that's by, that's like Gregory Oaks, man. He did that really cool artwork. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Greg Oaks did that. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's me, David the Rock Nelson there. You know, I'm 63, but I still got it. Look at that. Are you jealous of my body? I know you are. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a smoking Joe Frazier left hook. <laughs> yeah. Let's try.
exercise as a bar dips and chest press push-ups.